For many years, the Flat Earth community at large was in agreement that the world is a level, motionless plane, as evidenced by our common sense, everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments, including the Mickelson-Morley, Mickelson-Gale, Sagnac, Aries failure, and observable realities such as perfectly circular star trails around a stationary pole star, and the constellations remaining in their relative positions to one another for all of recorded history. Recently, however, a few Flat Earthers have revived Leo Ferrari's old Flat Earth Society claim that the world is not, in fact, a level, motionless plane, but rather a constantly upwards-rising plane. These people cite experiments such as a helium balloon moving forward in an accelerating car, or a cork inside a dropped bottle of water momentarily ceasing its descent while mid-air, as proof positive that Earth cannot be a stationary plane. They claim the only possible way to explain these results is to assume Earth to be constantly rising at 9.8 meters per second, or approximately 22 miles per hour, straight upwards. There is some debate amongst them regarding whether this upward motion is a constant velocity or an acceleration, but these new upward-rising Earthers have all recently come into agreement that our flat Earth can no longer be stationary. These upward-rising Earthers begin their inquiry innocently enough by asking questions about the directional vector of dropped objects, and why dense objects fall downwards rather than upwards or sideways, for example. To this question, I would give the answer that there is a pressure gradient formed by the amount of stacked air, water, or land over you in a column, which increases the pressure, weight, and density the farther down you go, and that defines direction, while things like helium balloons fall up, not down, proving there is no downward directional bias. Unsatisfied with this answer, upward-rising Earthers continue their inquiry by asking why, then, does Earth have a pressure gradient stacked in this particular fashion, with the densest layer at the bottom rather than the top or sides? Now, at this point, I would say such a line of questioning is tantamount to asking why is water wet, or why is fire hot? It's like asking why don't we walk upside down on the sky and look up to the ground? It's similar to asking why don't our arms grow out of our pelvis and legs grow out of our torso? As anyone who has spent significant time with a four-year-old knows, the question of but why, if asked long enough, eventually leads to an infinite regress of explanations that can only be ended with the true but potentially unsatisfying metaphysical answer of, it is that way because that's how it was created to be. Rather than accept that Earth was simply created to have the particular arrangement of density layering that it does, upward-rising Earthers instead claim that Earth must be a constantly upwards-rising plane, and that this constant vertical motion is the only thing that can explain the directional vector. Now, while this could make for an interesting speculation, the fact of the matter is that dropping a water bottle with a cork in it, or watching a helium balloon go forward in a moving car, are not demonstrations of the Earth constantly rising upwards. At best, these demonstrations provide tangential evidence for their line of questioning, but in no way prove their assumption that Earth is a constantly rising plane. In fact, upward-rising Earthers are forced to pile assumption upon assumption in order to defend their new dogma. Assumption number one. Their first assumption in order to answer the question of directional vector, going against all common sense, our everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments proving Earth to be completely motionless, they make the grand assumption that Earth is constantly rising upwards 9.8 meters per second. Assumption number two. In order to have a world that constantly rises upwards forever, they are now forced to make a second assumption which is that there exists an infinite expanse of empty space above our flat Earth for the constantly rising world to rise into. Assumption number three. Next, they are forced to assume that the entire atmosphere is somehow fixed like glue 
to rise perfectly along with the upward-rising earth, because otherwise the upward-rising earth would constantly be crashing up into the bottoms of birds, planes, helicopters, and everything else in flight above the forever upwards-rising earth. Assumption number four. Finally, they are forced to assume that the sun, moon, and stars are also all constantly rising 9.8 meters per second, somehow fixed along with the rising atmosphere. Otherwise, of course, the upward rising earth would crash into them as well. So rather than accept the order of density layering on earth to simply be as it is, upward rising earthers prefer to ignore their common sense, everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments proving a stationary earth in order to make assumption upon assumption upon assumption upon assumption fourfold in an attempt to answer their inquiry. Since upward rising earthers claim the earth, the luminaries, the atmosphere, and everything in it are all constantly rising together, there is no way for an experimenter to actually step outside this reference frame to confirm or deny their supposition. And this shows the ultimate futility of the upward rising earthers entire argument. Since no one can escape Earth's reference frame in order to observe or measure this supposed vertical movement of the Earth, its atmosphere, and all the luminaries, there is no way to verify or falsify the hypothesis. Therefore, when questioning the directional vector of density layering on our flat Earth, you can pile assumption upon assumption to arrive at this speculative and unprovable conclusion, or you can simply allow reality to be as it is.